Hey, this is Coach Josh. And over the last 20 years, I've watched thousands of people transform their health and their lives from the inside out for good. And I wanna share with you the commonalities that I've seen, the people that are the most successful, what they do, and how that relates to what the unsuccessful people do. So we're gonna create a list of do's and do nots so that you can learn from success and parse yourself between the successful people and the unsuccessful people. Let's get after it, shall we? What successful people do when it comes to their fitness and their nutrition plan is they stay flexible. So they have a plan, they have a blueprint, they, they map out where they're gonna be during the week and how they're going to get their, their workouts in and their, and their foods in, and they're able to adjust based on what their week gives them. Whereas unsuccessful people are very rigid. Oh, if I, if I can't work out at 7 a.m., I can't actually do it. Whereas the successful people might get up 30 minutes earlier and do a bodyweight workout before they hop on a flight, the unsuccessful person scraps the whole day because they're fixated on one way to work out. Successful people have direct conversations with their family, with their significant others, their partners, spouse, what have you, their kids, about how they're going to do health in their family with, with their fitness and their nutrition both, meaning they're a good example, but they also bring people in, bring the people in their family in to their own world of health and fitness. What that does is that creates a culture of buy-in inside the family. Whereas the unsuccessful people, when they don't do that, they avoid those crucial conversations with their spouse and their family members. Successful people listen to their body and unsuccessful people force their body to do things. If I'm lifting, I'm doing bench press, but my shoulder starts to feel tweaky and achy, I'll set the weight down, maybe I'll go to a lighter weight, maybe I'll just rest, maybe I'll shake it out, and then I'll bang out my last two reps. Whereas the unsuccessful person will say, you know what, I'll stop when I get to the end of the set, and they'll force out those last couple of reps. In the long run, it's inevitable that you're gonna have some sort of tweak, some sort of irritation, and some sort of injury, hopefully not too serious, but certainly, you're going to develop an injury over time. So you wanna cultivate the habit of listening to your body tell you before you get injured that something's going on so you can adjust your approach. Successful people have an approach mindset. So when they have pain or they have a failure point in their diet or something's going on, they actually lean towards that factor. So if my shoulder's bothering me and I'm getting pain when I'm doing push-ups, I don't stop working out my upper body. What I start to do is, I start to do the mobility, the rehab, the prehab that allows me to use my shoulder in a different way. The unsuccessful person, what they do is they avoid irritation and pain. Ah, it doesn't feel good when I do pull-ups, so I'm not gonna do shoulders anymore. I'm not gonna do back anymore. Well, what are you gonna do? Just gonna do bench every day for the rest of your life? Now, if you're a dude watching this, that's probably what you're doing right now, stop it. Instead. Get on board with the approach mindset and instead of avoiding those difficult things, start to integrate them more into your workouts. Successful people will track trends and averages. That could be reps of the push-up or the bench press. That could be their body weight on the scale. That all, all kinds of things that demonstrate some level of health and fitness. Whereas the unsuccessful people, every data point is revelatory of a problem or a win that probably doesn't exist. Successful people make smaller adjustments over longer periods of time. The unsuccessful person makes big, huge adjustments. They are, I'm gonna do a 1200 calorie diet. I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna get into a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a weight cut. I'm gonna be a bodybuilder. I'm gonna get on stage. Well, you can, over the course of months, steady step your way down to an extremely low amount of calories and cut weight sustainably as you do it without hating yourself, being in physical and mental pain and hating your life, if you're willing to make small adjustments. When you make large adjustments, it's immediately satisfying, but it creates long-term problems because it's difficult to go from 2,600 calories a day to 1,300, but it's also so much more taxing and fatiguing on the body to make those big swings. They also are not sustainable, and it creates this boom and bust, binge and purge cycle of health and fitness that I see with both on the food front, but exercise. You increase exercise really rapidly and you get burned out and injured, or you, you know, get on a diet for three or four weeks and you get burned out on tracking your food 
and you just end up doing a whole lot of nothing. If the winners make small adjustments and the people who do not win, we'll call them losers, make large adjustments, but for smaller periods of time, you wanna be on the side of the winners. You can make those switches. If you can do these things and not do these things, then you don't need a coach. You're already, uh, shit, you probably are a coach. And then you will be teaching me how to build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within.